Right now at noon, the CrossFit Games are underway at the Alliance Energy Center. How you can enjoy the games. And day three for the trial of a former UW football player accused of sexual assault is underway. We'll hear testimony from Quintez Cephas's former roommate. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now at Noon. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mark Kane. Thanks for tuning in to News 3 Now on this Thursday. We'll get to those stories in a bit. But first, let's head over to the Weather Center. Meteorologist Chris Reese has a look at your first alert forecast. A quick warm-up today. Yeah, that's right. And this will be a total surprise to folks, but it's beautiful outside once again for another day in a row. We're looking at the sunshine. Temperatures, though, are going to be just a little bit warmer. Here's a live look from the station. And this is visible cloud track just showing you we are going to be free of the cloud cover for the most part as we go throughout the day. But temperatures have already reached the low 80s in some spots. We're at 76 here in Madison, which is right where we were at this time yesterday. 79 in Janesville. Mineral Point has already made it to 81. Prairie du Chien at 82. And I do think a lot of us will see those temperatures making it into the lower 80s today. Winds still out of the north at five miles per hour at the moment. We're going to start to see those winds shift around to where it's the east and southeast as we go through the afternoon and into tomorrow. The dew points do remain into the low and mid 50s for a lot of folks in Wisconsin. But I do want to point out what's happening just towards our west. Those dew points are creeping up into the upper 60s towards 70. That'll be a little bit of a sign of what's to come towards the weekend as our temperatures get a little bit warmer and we get a little bit more humid. Whether or not we'll see rain chances, I'll talk about that in our main forecast coming up. All right, we'll see you in a few minutes. Thank All you, right. Chris. Quintus Cephas's trial is underway for the third day. He is the former Wisconsin Badger football player who's charged with sexually assaulting two women. Cephas's former roommate and current Badger football player, Danny Davis, testified today. Davis is accused of taking a photo of the women which he later deleted. As soon as I took it, um, I regretted it. I knew it was wrong. It was a mistake. Um, but um, she um, heard the flash because the flash went off. And uh, she got upset. And as soon as she came out the room and confronted me about it, I, I deleted it. I showed her in my uh, Recent deleted, it was deleted. I gave her my phone to show her that I didn't send it to nobody, that it was gone. We will have more on this trial coming up on News 3 Now at 4, 5, and 6, and all day long on Channel3000.com. A family in Lake Halley, Wisconsin, was found randomly attacked in their home, leaving a 24-year-old woman dead. Now the small community is rallying around their neighbors. Marley Mose reports. Carolyn Prochnow is moving her summer chores one lawn over to her neighbors, the Vanks. With both of the owners, you know, losing their oldest daughter, um, I mean, to me, this is the least thing we could do. Chippewa Chippewa County Chippewa Sheriff Chippewa James Chippewa Kowalczyk, Chippewa 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 Tang and Mai survived, but their injuries were bad enough. Both of them had to have an arm amputated. Their daughter, Layla Vang, was shot and killed. German then killed himself. Sheriff Kowalczyk says German has no connection to the Vang family. The trauma is going to be there for a lot of people for a long time. Russ has lived in this neighborhood for 34 years. He didn't know the Vangs well, but said they were always friendly. They always waved. They were very nice about that. Carolyn says the Vangs often did yard work and tended to their garden, which is why she wanted to keep it up while the parents recover. Just two weeks ago, the mother who lost one of her arms, she brought over two bags of huge bags of fresh produce to my family just because. These neighbors hope the trauma eventually leaves, but that the Vangs stay. We're hoping they will be coming back home because I couldn't ask for a nicer neighbor. Reporting in Lake Halley, Wisconsin, Marielle Mose, WCCO 4 News. Well, let the games begin. The 2019 CrossFit Games are officially underway at the Alliant Energy Center. Well The games bring four jam-packed days of competition to Madison. This year, the field expanded to include athletes from 114 countries, up from just 32 last year. Day one started with 148 men and 134 women, but those numbers were slashed in half to 75. 
and after 75 athletes were eliminated after the first event, history could be made at the games this year. Reigning champ Matt Frazier is back, and he's hungry for his fourth title. If he gets it, he'll tie the all-time record and become the fittest man in history. So if you're looking to get out to the games, when's the best time to go? Every day there's something different, but maybe I would start with Saturday uh, or Friday, but uh, there's Ragnar Relay uh, going on. There's the Expo, different stuff, demos uh, that you can take part in. That all leads up to the finals on Sunday where the fittest man and woman on earth will be crowned. For a full schedule of, of events, times, and deals offered around town in conjunction with the games, head to our website, channel3000.com. After five years, Madison chef Tori Miller is closing his restaurant on the city's near east side. Miller announced that Sujo is closing on August 24th. The restaurant is limiting its hours starting today. It'll now be open Tuesday through Thursday and Sundays from 4.30 to 9 p.m. On Friday and Saturday, the restaurant will stay open until 1.30 a.m. Miller says he plans to focus on delivering the best experience he can at his other restaurants, Gray's, Estrion, and La Toile restaurants. A bipartisan budget and debt deal has passed the Senate and is headed to the White House for President Trump's signature. The measure would permit the government to resume borrowing to pay all of its bills and would set an overall $1.37 trillion limit on agency budgets approved by Congress annually. It will also remove the prospect of a government shutdown in October. Former Vice President Joe Biden was the focus of attention during the second night of the Democratic debates. The frontrunner faced attacks from nearly every candidate on stage. Biden was criticized for being too tough on crime while in the Senate, and he defended deportations during the Obama administration. Biden attacked a Medicare for All bill supported by Senators Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, and Kamala Harris. The reality is that our plan will bring health care to all Americans under a Medicare for All system. If you notice, there's no talk about the fact that the plan in 10 years will cost $3 trillion. You will lose your employer-based insurance. There are still six months to go before the first votes are cast in Iowa. And there's more to come on News 3 Now at noon. I'm next with Sue at Howard's working on in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. Looking to save at the meat counter? If so, we've got one of the best food buys and we're gonna show you how to turn it into a restaurant-worthy dinner.
You know, when I was at the market the other day, I was reminded how budget-friendly chicken thighs are. So I picked some up so I could share with you a recipe that is one of my favorite dinnertime standbys. These are bone-in chicken thighs. And just because they're such a bargain, don't think for a second that they're not tender, flavorful, or meaty. To start, we place our chicken thighs in a plastic storage bag along with some soy sauce, scallions, a bit of lime juice, a couple of tablespoons of brown sugar, a little honey, crushed red pepper, and a bit of garlic. Now we seal this up and into the fridge it goes so all the flavors can marry overnight. Then you can cook them up either on a grill pan or on your outdoor grill. We want to cook them until no pink remains and the skin is caramelized. Serve these up over some rice or, better yet, on a bed of Asian slaw and call the troops to the table. If you like moist, meaty chicken, then this is a must-have. To get the recipe for what we call our teriyaki chicken thighs, all you have to do is visit our website. I'm Howard with Kelly in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found a teriyummy way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. Mm -hmm. Teriyaki, teriyummy. <laughs> we got it, Howard, thanks. There's more to come on New Street Now at noon. Up next, another sunny day across the area, but we could see some showers next week. Meteorologist Chris Reese has your first alert forecast right after this. Well, Wall Street kicks off a new month in the green and meet me at the mall. Diane King Hall has more in today's Money Watch reports. Stocks begin a new month on the plus side. Investors did a cautious round of buying and early trading after a sharp sell off yesterday that followed the Federal Reserve's first interest rate cut since the Great Recession. Can you hear me now? Verizon is out with its quarterly report card and it beat expectations. The telecom giant says earnings topped $4 billion on sales of $32.1 billion. 
The nation's number one wireless carrier added 245,000 customers as it began to roll out faster 5G service. GM's earnings are also in the spotlight. The automaker says profit totaled $2.4 billion during its second quarter, boosted by truck sales. The United Auto Workers Union is paying close attention to the results amid a contract renegotiation. The company has idled four plants and slashed roughly 4,000 white-collar jobs. And long live the mall. According to a new Shopkick survey, more than 50% of millennials plan to do the bulk of their holiday shopping at brick and mortar stores this year. More than half of baby boomers also say they will choose bricks over clicks. But 84% of people do plan to price compare and research online before making purchases. And that's your CBS Money Watch report. For more, head to cbsmoneywatch.com. At the New York Stock Exchange, I'm Diane King Hall. Thank you, Diane. At the noon hour, the Dow Industrials are up 249 points, the NASDAQ up 117, the SP 500 up 27. A reversal from yesterday. Let's check in now with QNO6 Farm Director Pam Yankee. How are, how are your numbers doing? Yeah, I, I wish I could match them, but uh, I'm afraid our momentum is still a little bit on the soft side, and it's primarily because of the weather, Mark. I mean, come on, first day of August, and we're looking at temperatures like this, and they're talking about holiday stories already. I don't want to push that button too fast, but the weather today, wonderful way to kick off the Wisconsin. And State Fair, and I want to remind you, I'll keep you up to date with little tidbits that are going to be going on at the show. On Sunday, for example, the Wisconsin Pork Association will induct Gary Skalitsky from Waterloo into their Pork Producers Hall of Fame. That event's going to happen uh, Sunday early afternoon in the Hog Barn at the Wisconsin State Fair. Gary and his wife Diane have been very, very instrumental in uh, the Open Breed Show at the Wisconsin State Fair and always very encouraging to young people at the State Fair. So they will be recognized on Sunday. If you're over there, you might want to visit the Pork Shop. That's where the Wisconsin Pork Producers have their uh, pork burger, their pork uh, on a stick. It's a butterfly and uh, a couple other tidbits. Last year, they had a record-breaking 30,000 sandwiches that they sold. They want to see a 20% increase on that this year. So let's hope the weather and your appetite cooperate. Wisconsin dairy farmers not real thrilled with their June milk price. It went down compared to May. Average dairy producer paid about $17.90 a hundredweight for their milk. That's about $1.47 per gallon at the farm gate. And that's about 20 cents less than the national almond milk average was for the month of June. Today, barrel cheese in Chicago dropped another half a cent to 169 and a quarter. 40 pound black cheese unchanged at 182. Double A butter also unchanged for a Thursday at 234 and a half per pound. But like I said, beautiful weather for the Wisconsin State Fair. Hope it just keeps rolling. I'd love to have record breaking attendance, record breaking pork consumption. You know what I'm saying? Just all the records go when the weather is good. Cream puffs. Yep, yep, milk, just milk, keep it covered. Milk yes, on a stick. Yes. Yep, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> All right, Pam, thank you. Let's yep. head over to the Weather Center. Chris Reese, another beautiful day out there. Yeah, this lake is looking gorgeous behind me, folks. Temperatures are comfortable. <laughs> the skies are blue. We're at 76 degrees right now. Those winds are still coming out of the north at 5 miles per hour, and the dew points are still into the mid-50s. Let's go ahead and show you the temperatures across southern Wisconsin as a whole. Some of us are approaching that 80 degree mark if we haven't reached it already. Janesville 79 mineral point at 81 right now. La Crosse has made it to 80. Even the lake shore. We have a lot of those temperatures closer towards the 80 Kenosha or towards the 80 degree mark. Kenosha at 78. Notice the air drier though. You see the winds coming off the lake. This is keeping some of those dew points all the way down into the low 40s for some spots. But as you work your way back towards the western half of the state, the dew points begin to come on up. We have dew points that are into the 60s now as you work your way closer towards the Mississippi River. And this is going to be the theme. As we go through the weekend, we're going to start to see our humidity go from comfortable to more sticky. It's not going to go all the way into the uncomfortable and oppressive range, but that humidity will creep back up just a little bit. In the meantime, we're still dry over the upper Midwest. No showers or thunderstorms. If you remember, Nebraska has had some showers and thunderstorms over that area for the past couple of days. That axis, though, has shifted more so towards the south throughout parts of southeastern Kansas and southwestern Missouri. But even still, those showers and thunderstorms have begun to fall apart. That's all a part of a little uh, disturbance out throughout the southern plains. High pressure, it does remain 
in control for us. But let's go ahead and time things out going through the weekend and I will show you where things may shake up a little bit in our weather pattern. This afternoon we'll see those temperatures topping out right around 81 or so. We'll cool right back down into the low 60s and upper 50s tonight. It's going to be a little bit of a warmer night as opposed to the past couple of nights, but it won't be unbearably warm. That's for sure. 82 as we go into tomorrow. Watch what starts to happen from the north. Some showers and thunderstorms try to work their way on down. They run into some drier air, so they won't make it all the way here. But as we get into Saturday, watch as a couple disturbances try to come our direction. You have a front from the north, another region of low pressure back towards the south and west into Saturday. The combination of those two disturbances in our atmosphere could lead to some afternoon showers or thunderstorms that pop up. I don't think everyone actually gets wet from that. I think a better chance of showers and thunderstorms is going to come next weekend. And here's why the big ridge of heat throughout the West is going to begin to break down a little bit. This is going to allow some cooler air to work its way southward out of Canada. So check out the time. Here we are by next Friday. That cooler air will be just to the north with the warmer air towards the south. The jet stream will be right on top of us. That allows for a lot of rising air. Once you get the rising air, you have a better chance for showers and thunderstorms. So as we look at our seven to 10 day forecast, pay attention towards next weekend. Next Friday, we have a stronger rain chance there. Same for Saturday. Now, the rain chance that we have for this Saturday will not be all that abundant. It's just a slight chance for now. We'll have a weak rain chance Monday and Tuesday, but the time period to really watch for organized rain chances will likely be a week from now, depending on how that jet stream sets up on top of us. We may need rain by then. We just might, but we'll we'll watch that one closely. The weather's been perfect. Yeah, it has. Yeah, can't get much better. Exactly. Right, thank you, Chris. Still to come on News Three Now at Noon, Marissa DeGroote from the Dane County Humane Society is here with our pet of the week. We'll introduce you to Old Joe, a border collie, right after this.
Marissa DeGroat is here from the Dane County Main Study. Good to see you. Hi. And who is our friend here this week? Oh, this is Old Joe. Old Joe. <laughs> as, as you can guess, Old Joe here is a senior uh, gentleman, maybe some sort of border collie lab mix. But he, he was a stray? Yep, so he was found stray, and um, when Joe came in, he was scary skinny very very skinny he weighed only about just over 21 pounds and he and should be what he should be closer to somewhere between 40 to 50. Wow. Um, and so you can see he still looks kind of skinny yeah. a little bit bony but he is putting on weight and um, he is now healthy enough and happy enough where you think he can go to a great new home as long as you're ready to kind of keep an eye on his weight and help him um, you know keep on a little weight and get some good exercise he's at a foster home right now yep so he's staying at one of our best foster homes um, and so if you are interested in meeting with Joe, all you have to do is call our adoption center to set up um, some time to come and meet him. But if you are in love right now, Joe is actually going to be at the shelter for a while this evening, uh, hanging out in my office. So if you would like to come and meet him uh, without setting up that appointment, you can come do that today. He's a great dog. He really is. Um, he is just one of those friendly guys. He um, loves other dogs, and we're actually hoping that he can find a home where maybe he can have another dog buddy because sometimes he gets a little lonely at home, and he will let his voice be heard. Oh, yeah? Uh, so we think that another dog buddy at home will help him with that. Um, but he is just such a laid-back, gentle guy. Yeah. Um, but he also gets a little goofy. You can see his favorite whale toy is here. He does love to run around and play. Very expressive face. And you got some long-time <laughs> residents out there. We really do. We've got our Lonely Hearts Club uh, members and Joe is one of those along with Banner, Copper, Monkey, Pancake, Waffle, Marshall, and Tater Tot. So a lot of dogs <laughs> who have had a long wait at the shelter. So if you're looking uh, for an animal who needs the help the most, these guys are it. Some great faces mm -hmm, there. Really hard. <laughs> Go to the website giveshelter.org for oh, last week. We had um. Uh, we had on oh our sleepy kitty corn chip. Corn chip. And corn chip did get adopted. And during that adoption special over the weekend, over 32 cats went home. That's great. Go to the website <laughs> giveshelter.org. Marissa, thank you. Thank you. Let's get old Joe home here. Chris has one final check of the forecast. The sunshine continues throughout the afternoon, folks. Look for those temperatures topping out right around 81. We'll gradually warm up though as we go throughout the week. A small rain chance this weekend, same for early Monday into Tuesday. Bigger rain chances perhaps by next Friday and Saturday. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you back here at 4 o'clock. In the meantime, have a great afternoon.